Right, so today we're going to talk about composition and uh, three tips that I often use for composition. Um, so the first is using leading lines. The second is looking at rule of thirds. And the third is centered reflection. If we have a look at um, this image here, so this is an image of Black Church Rock. Um, and um, on this image, we can see that we've got lots of lines leading to a point. Now, leading lines traditionally mean lines that kind of draw you into a space, quite often using one point perspective, uh, making that kind of distance. Um, and, the, and the lines kind of drawing you towards something or taking you out of a picture as well. So we can see that there are quite a few leading lines on this image kind of leading you into the space there. Um, leading lines can also be lines that kind of uh, lead your eye around the photograph. So for instance, this blue line leading your eye out and down and around um, a Black Church Rock. So I find that leading lines are really, really useful, especially when you're shooting wide like this, especially when you're shooting down on the ground. It's so, um, really, really invaluable. Um, here's another kind of classic example. So this was um, Burnham on Sea, and this is this really quite beautiful and stark uh, concrete wall here. And um, uh, it's a kind of sea protection. You can see these leading lines coming in like this. So you've got the kind of traditional leading lines here and of course the line of the shadow here as well. And then the horizon line and the line coming in like this. You've also in this case got a diagonal which is kind of leading you around the space. And I purposefully use that composition to create a diagonal, to create a really kind of stark light and dark as you can see in the original image there. Um, Right, and the leading lines can be less kind of geometric and less obvious. So for instance, I've um, got this shot of uh, cold Ashton, winter, just at the kind of end of the snow, um, a winter sky in, in late January. Um, and here we've got lines leading you into the center, but in a more kind of organic way, I guess. It's also forming a balance in here. So again, it's a centered composition and you've got everything going towards the center. So you've got this patch of ground going towards the center and this patch of sky going towards the center, leading you in with those leading lines. So again, it's just drawing your eye in and thinking about the journey that you, you kind of want your eye to take as you're, as you're going into that space. Um, here's another one, Dogoch Falls. So um, here, um, the lines are quite different. So we've got, a, um, we've, we've got the line of the water kind of leading you out and round. We've also got the line of the rock that's almost echoing that with the kind of parallel line of, of the rock leading you out and down through this, um, through this lovely landscape here. And then the last one, a bit like the one of Cold Ashton, you've got that kind of V shape leading you in as well. So with composition, looking for those leading lines, you're going to get more depth, you're going to get more direction, and it'll help you to develop that sense of um, space and depth in your image. So on to the rule of thirds. Now the rule of thirds, um, you shouldn't see it as a hard and fast rule. Um, but it can really help your landscape photography. Now I've got this classic um, image of Burnham on Sea. Um, and uh, just in case you don't know what the rule of thirds is, um, if you, um, I'm gonna put a grid over my image now. If you divide up your image into, um, into grids of uh, nine in total, nine blocks, so three going down and three going along, um, the rule of thirds basically um, states two things. So the first thing it states is that if you put something with, uh, within these two thirds, it makes the distance and depth more interesting. So for instance, if we were to put the sky in two thirds and the ground in one third, it draws you in. Um, conversely, you could have the, um, the, the ground using two thirds of the composition 
and then the sky having one third and it draws you in rather than having a completely centered composition like we're going to talk about next. The other thing that the rule of thirds says to make the composition more interesting um, is to have uh, something put on the intersection lines as well. So the intersection lines are these little red rings and you can, they're just the point where these, these points cross over and you can see that the Burnham on Sea Lighthouse basically is in both of these intersection rings here and here. On the other side you can see that the clouds are just about to come into this intersection here. So it's a rough rule but it does really help. It's a, it's a simple rule, lots of people poo poo it and say it's rubbish but I find that it really works very very well and it can work in very very different ways. So here's another example. So some trees that I took up in the Cotswolds near Tetbury and this is very very simple. No particular points on the intersection, just two-thirds sky, one-thirds ground. And it just gives a particular feel to the image if I take that grid off. It just gives a kind of pure feel to the image. And along with what I was talking about earlier, we've got a leading line coming in here as well. So if we were to, um, if we were to uh, draw an area here, if I just quickly draw in here, um, and just pick a colour, you can see we've got a leading line going up through the image here and we've got some others here as well. Okay, so, but the rule of thirds can be really, really simple and straightforward. And then a less obvious rule of thirds. So this is the shot I took in Snowden uh, with my drone. I've got a, um, a video uh, about this that I can put up in the link in the description above. And, um, this is using rule of thirds in a very, very different way. Now, when I was photographing this from the ground, I kind of saw this face shape in it that looks a little bit like this, um, which I thought was quite interesting. Um, but then if you put the rule of thirds over it, you can kind of see that you've got, um, you've got roughly kind of two thirds ground here and then one third background, so to speak. Um, you've got uh, different points at the bottom here being points of interest on the intersection points and possibly points here and here at the top as well. But it's very um, different kind of looser interpretation of the rule of thirds. Okay, so and then the last one, centered reflections. So if we look at this, uh, this, this reflection of Stourhead, it's almost in the center, not quite. But I mean, if we just draw a line across it, we can see that We've just got an, uh, an easy dividing line. Now, what this does, um, rather than creating a sense of dynamism, when you centre something or bring it near to the centre, it creates a sense of stillness in the image. And that can be really effective. That sense of, um, you know, when you see a reflection, and you see a very calm reflection, maybe you're using an ND filter to really smooth out the water, that calm stillness can be exemplified by putting something towards the centre. Here we've got another example of Paul Locke and again a line cutting through the centre. And this is a square composition as well. Now a square gives even more kind of calm to the space and it allows you to really kind of have this kind of sense of stillness. There's this beautiful uh, sunset that night and the water was perfectly reflecting it. And I used a 10 stop ND to just smooth out all those kind of um, ripples and water on the surface to just create this beautiful calm reflection. Also the tree is over to one side, it's not centered. So if we think about the rule of thirds again, that would be on one third line. So it's almost using the rule of thirds and centered reflection. And then finally, we've got um, this, uh, I took this shot at five o'clock in the morning when Bathampton Meadows had flooded. There was loads of ice, it was beautiful and stunningly cold as well. And again, we've got a central line of reflection going throughout it. And this one's pretty much perfectly in the center. Now with the panorama, this is a stitched image of about five different images. But that centered reflection kind of almost creates a kind of pattern or a shape and it creates a very, very different feeling to the composition. So those are three ways of using composition.
And you know, there are many, many ways of using composition. There are many kind of uh, more kind of um, types of composition that are open to interpretation. But those are three ways that I found really useful to my photography. And it really enables me to get quite quick, dynamic, bold compositions. And using those rules really helps me to do so. So please like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.